In a world where digital media is gaining more and more ground, people just aren't collecting video games as much as they used to, but somehow, some way, the collecting scene for the Nintendo Switch is still managing to thrive quite well, with tons of people fiending for all sorts of collector's edition releases and what have you. But while I personally love collecting physical video games for certain consoles, the Nintendo Switch just isn't one of them. But just because I don't collect for the console myself, that doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of good reasons why one would. So before you leave a banana in the tailpipe of my comments section, make sure to sit back in your slipperiest chair, press the subscribe button if you like games, goofs, and glory, and allow me, the world's strongest power lifter, Cameron All One Word, to tell you the pros and cons of collecting video games for the Nintendo Switch. Alright, so while I don't think video game collecting is nearly as cool as it used to be thanks to all the massive day one patches and all that, I would still definitely agree that collecting for the Switch is a lot better than the last two PlayStation and Xbox consoles for quite a few reasons, with the main one being that cartridges just feel way more definitive than discs. And yeah, I already know there's gonna be some dingus in the comments that's gonna try and tell me that the Switch uses game cards rather than cartridges, but to that I say suck it, jabroni. Calling them cartridges is just way more fun, but while most would agree that cartridges are cooler than discs, the fact is that they also do kinda suck at the same time. I mean, sure, they're delicious and fun to hold in your hands, but for whatever reason, they're way more expensive than Blu-rays, which is why games are usually more expensive on the Switch than on other consoles, even though sometimes developers are just charging more because they know they can get away with it. Not only do they cost more, but they could also only hold 32 gigabytes worth of data, and since cartridges cost more based on how much data they can store, most developers don't even bother using the cartridges that can hold more than 8 gigabytes, which is why there's so many Switch games that require massive day one downloads just to be playable. And if you ask me, this is the main reason why I just don't feel the need to collect for the console myself. I mean, as of this recording, I do have a pretty sizable stack of games myself, but that's just because they come out faster than I could actually find the time to play them all. Whenever I eventually do find the time to finish most of these games, though, you could bet your Peter that I'm selling most of them off, which isn't that unusual for a lot of people, but I don't always do this with games myself. In fact, I even made a video for which 11 consoles I make it a point not to sell any of my games for, but I didn't include the Switch in that video, not because it's the worst console to collect for by any means, but it's certainly not the best either. At least not as far as my own personal criteria for collecting is concerned anyway, which mostly comes down to full games actually being on the physical media, which is why games like the Mega Man Legacy Collection are actually an asset better on the PlayStation and Xbox since it actually comes with all the games included on the discs, even though this was just Capcom being extraordinarily cheap and lazy with the Switch version since both Legacy Collections combined are still less than 8GB. And I mean, yeah, there are definitely plenty of Switch cartridges that have the full games on there, or at worst in the case for a game like Super Mario Odyssey, the update's file sizes are even smaller than my peep, and I never let small updates prevent me from collecting for an entire platform, since even the 3DS, which is my all-time favorite console to collect for, has small updates here and there. But there's just such a large amount of the Switch's physical library that only comes with a small percentage of the game on the actual cartridges that are basically gonna become paperweights after the apocalypse. One very interesting thing that we've been seeing more and more of lately, though, is games being released digitally, only to end up being re-released physically later on. Sometimes this is done with less popular games, where developers legitimately couldn't afford a physical release since they didn't know how popular the game would end up becoming, and other times publishers knew damn well that their game would sell out the ass, but decided to release the game twice anyway, since they knew a lot of people out there would buy the game again physically. The worst example of this is when Sega straight up lied and acted like they weren't sure if Sonic Mania would be popular enough for a physical release to be worthwhile, only to go ahead and release a physical collector's edition with a digital download code anyway. But even though this could totally be scammy for developers to do, I actually think it's far better for long-term collecting since the physical versions at least come with all the DLC and patches included, as opposed to games like Breath of the Wild or Smash Ultimate where you're never going to be able to play any of the extra content if you find loose copies in a post-apocalyptic world. Don't get me wrong though, I totally get that this is just where the industry's heading, and I'm more than happy that these games got DLC instead of us having to wait a few more years to play the base games just so the extra content would be on the actual cartridges, but I can't pretend that this doesn't hurt the console's long-term collectability is all. Then of course there's the physical Switch boxes that come with digital download codes and no cartridge at all, which you might think that I hate even more, but to be honest, I actually prefer this, because games like this avoid the infamous Switch tax more often than not, and at least they're upfront about what they are. You see, Nintendo used to put these little white warning labels in the boxes of games whenever the cartridges didn't have most of the content on there, but they eventually made the warning label a lot harder to read, most likely because third parties probably weren't too happy about not being able to deceive customers as easily. As far as I'm concerned, physical cartridges that only come with part of the game are basically just physical copies of digital downloads, which is fine for reselling, but again, these games usually come with a Switch tax and it'll be useless after the Switch stops receiving online support, so personally, it just kind of kills my enthusiasm as far as collecting for the console is concerned. And it's one thing to do this with individual games, but for compilations like the aforementioned Mega Man Legacy Collection and pretty much anything else Capcom releases, the cartridge only comes with one game, with the rest of the collection being on a download code that you can only use one time for one console. 
I mean, you never see this happening with movies on DVDs and Blu-ray, which is why I usually sell Switch games after I'm finished with them more often than not. Plus, we all know that there's probably gonna be Super Ultra Mega 32K remasters coming out for all these games in the future anyway, and since that's likely to be the case, it's not like we're ever gonna go back to playing the outdated Switch versions for most of these games anyway. But then again, while it can be discouraging to collect for the Switch knowing that there's probably gonna be better versions of its modern games on future consoles, the fact that it's currently getting so many updated definitive HD remasters for pretty much every notable game that's ever been released is a pretty damn good reason to collect for the console in the first place. I mean, sure, its library might be obsolete in the future, but for now, the best console to play most games on is easily the Nintendo Switch, in my opinion, aside from the most recent AAA titles that the console can't handle anyway. But even then, there's really only a handful of modern games that fall into this category if you think about it, seeing as how there's so many reputable modern games that don't rely on horsepower. And if the Switch could play every game up until the PS3 360 era just as good as the current PlayStation and Xbox consoles can, then wouldn't you rather have these games on the console that lets you play them on your TV and on the go? I mean, again, some games aren't actually on the cartridges, but even if you're only building a collection of Switch games that are, while pretending the fake physicals don't exist, there's still more than enough classics as well as modern games that make the Switch's library one of the best ever, which is why I don't always sell Switch games after I'm done playing them if I think I might want to replay them someday. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you want to play games like Katamari Damacy, Dark Souls, or Final Fantasy XII on their original consoles, then more power to you, but personally, I just can't imagine ever doing this myself when I could either play these games on a crispy 4K TV or on the go with the Switch version. So until Nintendo inevitably releases something better, the Switch is actually one of the best consoles to collect for in a lot of ways, and if nothing else, then all these games that are only available digitally or fake physically could at least be considered bonuses for a console library that's already highly collectible. I mean, after all, a Wii's not any less fun to collect for just because you can't download virtual console games to it anymore. All I'm saying is that while I totally understand why so many people are passionate about collecting for the Nintendo Switch, the console's got a few notable flaws that kill my enthusiasm for hoarding games on it. But anyway, let me know what you think about Switch collecting in the comments below, and as always, I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody at some point. If you liked this video, though, then you might like my video on which 11 consoles I think are the best to collect for, though, but for now, I gotta go pay my egg bills. Later. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.